Please, and we have Scott Carlson. Uh, he's the sales manager for North America for SAF. He'll be doing our webinar for us today. Uh, excited about the webinar. We have a lot of uh, people on it signed up, so that should be great. Uh, a lot of good information that Scott's going to provide for us. If you have any questions, which I assume everybody probably will while this is going on, you could just type the questions in the question pane, and then uh, we'll address them all at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar. I think Scott's price left some time to address some of the questions because I know we'll we'll have a few of them. So I'm going to turn it all over to you, Scott, and uh, take us through it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much, Scott, for the introduction. And uh, hello, hello, and uh, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Carlson. I am one of three sales managers who work uh, directly here in the U.S. Uh, for SAF Technica, and uh, we work very, very closely with uh, our partnership here with Microcom. So we have uh, put together a bit of a presentation that's an overview on the entire product portfolio as well as we do some focus on uh, a most recent uh, released product we call the Free Mile, which is a 24 gig product. And uh, I'm going to touch on uh, a bit about the company, touch on our customers a bit, uh, some things about applications. Um, hopefully I, I don't get too salesy and uh, that I kind of keep it uh, you know, good technical sound information for everybody. And of course, uh, at the end, uh, and I don't think it should take us too very long. Uh, I'd welcome questions that everybody would have. So I, I kind of uh, authored this presentation here and uh, titled it as uh, Backhaul Considerations and uh, kind of positioning a discussion around unlicensed versus unlicensed. Let's see, Scott. Yeah, I'm get, getting the screen to... Did it, did it prompt? Well, I saw the I saw the mouse move. Go ahead and uh, try clicking whatever you were clicking before. Well, might have some. Let me uh, let me move them for you. There we go. Great. Um, so we'll try again for the next slide. We'll see what happens there. But I, th I think maybe it's just a little bit delayed. So anyways, uh, SAF Technica is a uh, manufacturer that uh, does full cycle production. We manufacture all the, comp all the componentries and, and the hardware casings and, and uh, do the entire product uh, from start to finish. Uh, we've been in existence uh, since 1999, so we have 10 plus years of, uh, of true experience in building uh, microwave products. Uh, we're publicly traded on the Euro NASDAQ. Uh, with employees uh, headcount over 160, um, and our manufacturing facility, as it says there, is in Riga, Latvia. And uh, for those that may know uh, a bit about uh, that area, there is uh, quite a bit of wireless expertise uh, between SAF Technica being a, a major uh, manufacturer as uh, Microtech. So those are two similar uh, organizations from that part of the world. Um, we manufacture products uh, for FCC, Etsy, and IC standards. Uh, we're also very active in the uh, WISPA community, uh, active in telco communities, uh, electrical cooperatives, a number of different verticals that uh, we provide products, uh, for, uh, microwave products to. And uh, basically the, the spectrum ranges that we're carrying is 6 through uh, 38 gigahertz and then also, as I mentioned, at the start uh, into the license-free 24 gigahertz, which is quite interesting. And uh, again, as it states at the bottom, capacity is up to 1 gig uh, on full duplex per link. So uh, as a manufacturer, uh, as I mentioned, we, we do the full product. Uh, we do uh, what we call um, full uh, testing uh, on our products. We test every component, every, every radio that gets shipped out. We do not do uh, spot testing. So we have an extremely uh, high uh, MTBF of 37 years. Um, we have been doing the outdoor, full outdoor type radio since 2002. And uh, one unique uh, selling attribute is that we do not sell software keys. Uh, these are completely open radios, and you get uh, from day one the full capacity. Um, we have uh, stocking partnerships here with Microcom. Um, we have full uh, 724 support and uh, sparing programs. And uh, as 
many people will attest that have set these links up, they're extremely easy to configure. Uh, less than roughly 20 minutes to set a radio up. We have uh, worldwide presence, as I mentioned. We're uh, headquartered out of uh, Riga, Latvia, uh, but we have offices really throughout the world. Um, these first few are going to pop up are here in the U.S. And that's in uh, Toronto, uh, Montana, and uh, Texas. And we have presence in uh, Mexico, South America, uh, Africa, and essentially uh, locations in the Middle East uh, throughout the world. We uh, consider among our customers uh, companies like Global Crossing, uh, Telefonica, uh, China Mobile, uh, and now here in the, U in the U.S., Verizon. So we have a carrier class uh, type product, and uh, we also sell a lot to uh, a lot of the smaller operators as well. Um, so this, uh, this slide will basically mention some of the uh, clients here that might be familiar to you. Uh, I guess most notably uh, here, U.S. military uses our product. Uh, Verizon has used it, uh, as I mentioned, Global Crossing and, and many others. So specific to uh, this U.S. market uh, or FCC products, we're manufacturing uh, products in six, we are currently delivering six 11 gigahertz, 18 gigahertz, 23 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz, and 38. Um, as you may know or have heard that the FCC has now opened up uh, the bands of uh, 7 gigahertz and 13 gigahertz. Uh, we have been manufacturing those products for many years in the European uh, space. Now we are just uh, converting the product here into the U.S. and we'll have those products uh, readily available uh, through Microcom as well. So this is kind of a general text uh, sheet. It talks a bit about capacities. Uh, we have a 106 megabit full duplex product that's available in all the FCC frequencies. We have the full outdoor product, which is the one in the middle with the red dot. That is called the Lumina. That's a 366 uh, megabit uh, full duplex product. And then we also manufacture uh, the split mount version, uh, which is called the Phoenix. And uh, the Phoenix, again, is a 363 megabit product. Um, and there's uh, some pros and cons of uh, people that want to do uh, split architecture versus full outdoor, um, which we'll kind of get into a little bit. Um, but there's also some additional capability with the Phoenix for carrying T1 traffic or TDM traffic. We have uh, all the different topologies of uh, 1 plus 0, uh, 1 plus 1 hot standby, uh, 2 plus 0. In fact, we can go all the way up to 4 plus 0 with the Phoenix, and that's where we deliver a gig, a gig plus uh, traffic. I would point this out here to you as well. Uh, ACM switching uh, stands for adaptive code modulation. That is truly uh, hitless in the shifting process so that we can uh, maintain very, very high integrity on, on uh, low latency type traffic, uh, VoIP or video that type of applications. Um, key uh, attributes here, again, capacity up to 366, uh, flexibility and channel bandwidth, as you can see, 20, 30, 40, and 56. We do the full modulation schemes from QPSK up through 256 QAM. We have uh, multiple options on interfaces whether it be uh, electrical, uh, Category 5 type uh, connection, or a optical connection, or even a hybrid connection, which gives you the ultimate flexibility um, for you know, sparing and or uh, just different configurations you might encounter out in the field. Uh, it is uh, IP Ethernet traffic that we're carrying. And uh, again, the frequency bands you can see here Another key attribute for our radios is we have extremely low power consumption, um, which we'll touch on here briefly, uh, means a lot to the service provider in terms of their long-term operating expense. Uh, I think the key thing that I would point out uh, on the Phoenix uh, would be two things. Uh, 
you have 20 T1 ports here uh, for you know mobile carriers that have existing TDM traffic that they want to uh, convert uh, onto IP. That is, both the IP and the uh, TDM traffic are truly native traffic, so they do not uh, take away bandwidth from the uh, IP side, for example. So uh, <clears throat> that's the capacity that it'll carry. And uh, again, the whole concept of uh, the split architecture is there are a lot of folks, uh, largely from the telephone operator community, that prefer a split architecture, uh, that they prefer to have their electronics perhaps uh, down uh, in a communication shack where they can get access to it. Um, that is a, a trend that seems to be shifting more towards the folks that want to use the full outdoor unit, uh, which is just a, a much easier product to set up and uh, again spare and things like that. Um, a ACM, in case you haven't uh, familiarized yourself with it before, is the ability for the radio to withstand uh, changes in weather conditions. Uh, microwave uh, systems uh, are designed around modulation schemes, which is basically bandwidth, and uh, they're calculated against uh, rain, uh, rain factors. So we look at a particular link in a geographical area and we uh, evaluate what is the rain rate per hour, and what is the modulation scheme that we are trying to achieve. So if we are trying to modulate at 32 uh, APSK, we at uh, what we call five nines, which is a very high availability rate. We we design the system uh, link to perform to certain characteristics. When weather comes through, as you can see, uh, like they show moving uh, from right to left, uh, a thunderstorm starts coming through and, and rain occurs. The radios will shift down uh, based on changes in the uh, received sensitivity levels and uh, keep the link alive. And uh, so that's the idea of ACM. It's, it is truly hitless in that shifting process. Um, and coupled with that, we also uh, do priority steaming uh, with QoS priorities. So again, we can take and, and build links that have voice traffic extremely high prioritized at 99.995. And uh, we can kind of move through the the scheme of, of availability rates and, and design your traffic patterns around uh, appropriate uh, modulation schemes. We uh, touched on this briefly, but uh, the interfaces to connecting uh, these outdoor radios are either electrical or optical or hybrid. So in, in some instances, uh, optical will make a lot of sense uh, because you have virtually no distance limitation on how far you can run your fiber to the, to the radio, uh, plus it's uh, immunity to uh, electrical interference. So there are some advantages to fiber interfaces that, that have to be looked at. Um, folks that want to use just the ease of, uh, of Category 5 cable, that's used, then you use the electrical connection. Um, and of course have uh, all the appropriate lightning protection and surge dressing. This slide is a uh, picture showing the uh, couplers or an OMT, a fancy name for taking uh, vertical and horizontal polarity and moving it through a single type of an antenna. And so we can take a single antenna convert it into a dual pole, a vertical and H pole antenna, and put two radios together and combine the uh, capacity. So take 366 and add a second radio and now have uh, 720 plus. So that's, that's the idea of that. Standard configuration is just a basic one plus zero. I think that I also have a slide here that's going to show a uh, hot standby configuration. Well, all of these uh, configurations can be set up for backup. This is a 2 plus 0 uh, running through a switch, and 
and uh, protecting uh, in case one of the radios uh, should fail, it would automatically switch over to the other radio. Okay, and mentioned earlier, uh, very, very low power consumption. Uh, most of these radios operate between 25 watts and 40 watts, and uh, that has a fairly uh, sizable impact uh, on, your, on your DC uh, power that's being used by the operator, and long term, uh, that, that adds up to a bit of money. And uh, that is why you're seeing a lot of folks moving into using the full outdoor Lumina type radios. Uh, ease of installation and the OPEX is very favorable. So that was uh, kind of a, a snapshot on licensed uh, products from SAF. Uh, most recently we have just uh, announced our free mile, uh, 24 gig. Uh, the, the band of 24 gig is uh, very, very underutilized in the in the U.S. right now, and uh, it does offer us the capability of, of uh, generating uh, microwave uh, type links uh, at 100 megabits of full duplex. And so this is an exciting product. We are in the very, very final stages of, of having the FCC ID tags issued. Uh, we have the products already built. And, and are ready to be shipped into uh, Microcom's uh, warehouses. So uh, literally, uh, hopefully days away from just finalizing on, on all of that, and this product will uh, be in the US. So with this product, uh, again, we have uh, 100 megabits of full duplex capability. Um, we offer two different channel widths, 10 megahertz and 30 megahertz. Um, which will affect the, uh, the capacity of the radio. Um, so if you're looking for the full uh, 100 megabits, then you're going to use the 30 megahertz channel. Uh, if you're looking to uh, broaden the distance, make the link go further, you may want to use a 10 megahertz channel and, uh, and get 40 megabits full duplex, whatever the case, uh, whatever the calculator would tell us to use. We have uh, various link calculators that we can make available to uh, anyone's request. So uh, it, it operates like our, our normal uh, licensed radios with modulation schemes running from QPSK up to 64 QAM. And uh, it's, it's notable that uh, the maximum transmit power EIRP is 32.7. Uh, which you need to use uh, when you're doing your path calculations and looking at antenna sizing and uh, distances, etc. cetera. Uh, runs on standard uh, 48 uh, DC. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a PoE uh, product. Um, it has ACM uh, hit list shifting. We built a uh, RSSI uh, LED meter on it, um, so that's, that's very helpful for installation. And again, uh, much the same as our, our licensed product, installation on these units can be literally uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, max. They're extremely intuitive, and we've built a really interesting and uh, uh, very well-developed uh, GUI to help uh, the installer. So part of the discussion when looking at a 24 gig link is to consider what you may or service or what your service providers might already be using in 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, traditional 5.8 gigahertz operate uh, with time division duplexing. That's the TDD you see. Um, so you basically are, are uh, splitting the signal up uh, and you, it's a asymmetrical uh, type traffic. Uh, where these uh, operating in uh, frequency division duplexing are full duplex, so the capacity is is substantially more uh, when you start to consider it from a full duplex versus a time division duplex uh, perspective. So we're we're seeing a lot of interest from folks that have five five point eight uh, backhauls in place. Uh, 
They may be part of their network or they may be dedicated point to points for customers that want to now convert them over to a uh, 24 gigahertz uh, FDD platform uh, because of the increase in capacity, uh, the ability for it to uh, ace hitlessly shift using ACM, and probably most importantly is the ability to design the link uh, based on these availability rates, 99.99, 99.995, et cetera. That ability gives them uh, the chance to offer their customers um, service level agreements. And uh, they're finding that to be a, a quite a, a good proposition for, for many folks. Um, again, and, and a lot of people that are, have used for 5.8 or 5 gigahertz uh, for a long time and noise floor levels are extremely high. Uh, when you compare it to 24 gig out there in the marketplace, it's very minimal. There's not much uh, 24 gig out there in, in deployment right now. Uh, What's interesting too is if you look at the diagrams there where they're showing basically the beam width of the antennas uh, used for both 24 gig, the one on the top, and then the beam widths that are used on like 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. You'll notice that uh, the beam widths for 24 gig is much, much narrower uh, versus what you see in the other ones. So what that does is it's just essentially just uh, broadcasts that signal in, in a 5 gigahertz or 2.4, it broadcasts that signal in a much, much larger area, therefore just creating more noise pollution. You have much better control over a narrow beam width than you do with a, a wider beam width. This is a, uh, a graph that was taken uh, from a, an existing customer that had a uh, TDD 5.8 uh, point to point link and you can see the uh, response time is, uh, is bouncing around quite a bit uh, and then when they switched over to using a 24 gigahertz uh, latency uh, substantially has gone down and, and uh, it's stabilized so it's, it's quite, a, quite a difference. Um, if you look at Right here at the start, uh, it talks about uh, 0 0.2 milliseconds uh, maximum uh, versus two, a full 2 milliseconds minimum on 5, on five gigahertz. So it's definitely a, a product that's uh, applicable for high-level uh, uh, voice connections, uh, video connections for customers. Uh, gosh, I think we kind of touched on this here, uh, but it's a, a little bit better graphic uh, about the ability for the radios to recognize changing weather conditions and downshift, and then when weather improves, they automatically shift back uh, to their original configuration. Uh, all the radios, uh, be it Free Mile, uh, have a you know, built-in lightning protection, but there's also uh, additional surge arresting uh, that we sell with the links. Um, so it's, this is just a bit of a diagram on the connectivity of it. Kind of small to read, I apologize, but uh, there's this GUI uh, screen, screen cap is basically the single screen that you work through to uh, configure the radio and uh, it, it can be uh, easily accessible through uh, command line uh, or telnetting into it. Um, you have to set the radios, uh, one on vertical pole on one side and the other side on H pole. Uh, it has to do with the, uh, the flange that's built into the radios to maximize the, the capacity essentially. So what you're seeing in the middle here is showing uh, the, that you have a vertical pole and you have an H pole uh, configured correctly. You also have uh, a bit down here, much harder to read, but you, you start to enable 
uh, ACM shifting into it. You set your channel widths all on this uh, GUI here. And then uh, we also have a built-in spectrum analyzer so that uh, on the initial setup of the radio, you'll want to run a spectrum analyze, uh, analyzer and see if there's any other uh, channels being utilized, and it'll tell you exactly which channel to set the radio to. Uh, distances. Uh, the, the idea of distances in 24 gigahertz um, is always, uh, you know, based around sizing of antennas, uh, weather conditions, uh, you know, your typical evaluations that you go through uh, with our standard license links as well. Um, with that said, 24 gigahertz has a much smaller transmit power than those license links. And you have that limitation of 32.7 EIRP. So in general, I like to tell people, uh, no matter where they are kind of in the US, I, I use these as, as benchmarks. Uh, one, probably one mile to uh, maybe a mile and a half with one foot antennas and getting full modulation rates to uh, moving up to a two foot type antenna and pushing the distance between uh, two and three miles. Uh, I have customers in very arid environments uh, like in, in Phoenix and Texas that can push uh, these radios out to uh, you know, five, six miles. But they're in a very arid environment. They don't have um, the weather conditions that, that I think most of us see uh, around the country. So these are just some general parameters. And uh, again, we have a, a path calculator uh, that's available that, that uh, everyone that wants one can get one. And you can uh, experiment with antenna sizing, uh, changing transmit powers, and uh, see the effect on the distance and the uh, availability rates. So where is uh, 24 gig uh, taking traction? Typical uh, ISPs and wireless ISPs, uh, private networks, uh, you know, such as uh, you know, private point-to-point -point links uh, for hospitals, uh, for education, uh, you know, for uh, enterprise accounts, those types of things. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, pretty much anybody that might be seeing a lot of uh, congestion with their current 2.4 and 5.8 and may want to consider if they can put in a 24 gig within those distances and uh, eliminate a lot of that noise and offer a, a more reliable type link. So as kind of a recap on that, on the Free Mile product, uh, full duplex, 100 megabits, also carries two T1s, um, very low inter interference uh, in comparison with 2458, uh, hitless shifting, um, very easy to set up. Uh, it has a radio polarization sensor built into the GUI, which, which I pointed out, and then also the uh, spectrum analyzing capability. This uh, just happens to be a, a client uh, of ours that's using a combination of uh, existing Lumina license links, and then also uh, uh, spoking out with uh, more on the 24 gig for uh, private point to points. So we kind of carry a, a full suite of products for uh, microwave point to point applications, is the message here. And uh, that's kind of what we put together for uh, you know, your consideration. Um, I'll, I'll turn it back to Scott Stevens to queue up questions as, as appropriate. So I thank you for your, your interest and time. Oh, that, was, that was great, Scott. Thank you very much. You did a great job. Um, looks like I've got, a, I've got one question right here about, about your link calculator. They, uh, they wanted to know, um, is it available? I mean, you said it's available to them. Is that something they send an email to you guys and you guys give them access to the link calculator, or is it something that they send you the information and you have to do the link calculation form? Well, if, if uh, you go to our website and get registered as a partner, then you will get access to, to that link. And 
registration is, is not a, a cumbersome process necessarily, but uh, if, it's, if it's any easier and they want to look at, get it done right away, they can just send uh, you, Scott, or, or you can give them my email address and I'll just send them the, the, the calculator right away too. So. Okay, that, that's, some, that's something that can just be like forwarded to them, and then they they link in, they log into the calculator, whatever, and they click on it, and it calculates everything for them they need to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answered that. Okay. And uh, and and you you need a little bit of familiarity with uh, link path calculators. Uh, it has the typical things that you would see. Uh, it'll ask you for coordinates. Uh, if you don't have coordinates, you can set it manually based on a distance. So if you you uh, you don't have the coordinates, and you say, well, look, I'm we're how far can I go in two miles or at, at what size antenna? Set it manually and then select the antenna size and then you also have the option on transmit power. You can change the transmit power from auto setting to, uh, to a manual set and then from there all you do is just click a, a single button and it'll do all the calculations for you. But it, it's, uh, it's very straightforward. Folks that have worked with uh, radio calculator before will will see it right away. It's, it's something they're very familiar with. Okay, good. Thank you. I hope that answered it for them. Let's see the next one. Um, what the difference between standard power and high power? Uh, like we have certain links. Yeah. Yes. Uh, certain frequencies we offer high power versions, and uh, what we're doing is uh, increasing the transmit power. And uh, in that case, it helps us build uh, links uh, in, many, in many instances with smaller antennas. So, if, for example, we have 11 gigahertz that's offered in a high-powered version uh, where I might use a standard power with a four-foot, I could get by with a high-powered uh, three-foot antenna configuration. Okay. So, so we, we have that option for, for going high-power. Okay, that's all that answers form. Okay, uh, let's see. Any special distance restraints on SAF PoE injectors to radio? Good question. Uh, don't I don't have the answer to that, but I will get it. Okay. I suspect it might be just standard uh, Ethernet restrictions on Cat five, but I'll I have to find out. I'll, I'll get that information back to you, Scott. Perfect. Yeah, and I could get it out to, I have it on here who the person is, and I could get that out to them. Okay? Terrific. Um, looks like I've had a couple of people asking about copies of the slides, which um, if, you know, if you need a copy of the slides, you could send an, I could, you know, I could definitely send a copy of the PowerPoint to anybody that needs it. So I don't know if, if anybody could send a, you know, just an email to your sales representative. You could send it to me, or you could just send it to our, to, to our regular sales mail um, email box, which is, sales at microcomtech.com and um, that would be uh, obviously sales at and then the it's m-i-c-r-o-c-o-m-t-e-c.com there's no h in the tech part um, or also you could uh, you'll visit our YouTube page um, you'll give me a little bit of chance to put it on there but this uh, this webinar will also be on, on our YouTube page um, probably say by the end of today you could you know you could look at it there too uh, let's see. I think that was uh, that was it. Not a lot of questions, Scott. You did you did a great job. Well, again, I appreciate everybody's interest, and uh, we have a great partnership here with Microcom. Uh, the product is uh, very well proven out in the marketplace, and we're very very competitive as well. So hopefully, uh, we can find some things to talk about. Yeah, and you know, one one more thing I wanted to add. You know, you're talking about the free mile, and we've, I mean, that 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 product is taken off like like wildfire. I mean, we've have, I mean, we have a lot of pre-orders already in for it. So I mean, it's just a matter of of getting that FCC label, to, you know, to put on those babies to ship them out. I think that I think that's going to be it's going to be great for for um, just with that price point, and everything is going to be great out in the marketplace. Yes, totally agree, and uh, literally just. Uh, waiting uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for seeing that email on the final uh, FCC ID number. So, right, and I, and I think I think once you get that done, I think we've even got some scheduled to, to ship out air to get them in to take care of some of the pre-orders. We're trying to get those those taken care of right away. And then, you know, obviously we'll have some coming on a normal container and stuff like that for stock. But so if, you know, if anybody's interested, let's get those, get those pre-orders in so we can have those, you know, air freighted in and get them in, get them out in the field as, as soon as possible. Like Scott said, it should be like any day that, that that pickers should be able to be stuck on there. 
Um, anything else you need to add, Scott? No, I think that's okay. Right. And, uh, thank, thank you, everybody. No, I, I thank you very much. You did a great job, Scott. And if anybody you know has any questions or they want to you know see anything, we have all the products listed on our store too. At uh, you know you just go on our, our web store, microcom.us. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great day, and thank you very much for your help, Scott. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you.